Thursday. Good to be with you. We've been looking at the model prayer by the Lord Jesus Christ. And yesterday we looked at give us this day our daily bread, mainly teaching that we should trust God and meet our needs daily and, and not necessarily try to hoard and store up things for ourselves and to make sure that we have the proper perspective on things and possessions. Then he starts dealing with sins. But you understand he's talking to Christians. He's talking to his disciples. And the scripture says that those who place their faith in Jesus Christ have their sins forgiven in the sense that there is no guilt on their account. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And so sin is a different matter for a believer in Jesus Christ. Remember when we went through the book of John in chapter 13 when Jesus started to wash their feet and Peter said, you won't wash my feet. And Jesus said, well, if I don't, I don't have anything to do with you. And then Peter said, wash my whole body. And Jesus said, someone who has bathed doesn't need his whole body washed. He just needs his feet washed because you've gotten the dust of the world on your feet. And then he said to his disciples, you are all clean. In other words, you've all been bathed. You've had your sins washed away, but your feet get dirty from time to time. And so believers have no guilt on their account, but the influence of the world does get on us from time to time. And since it's, since it's not a courtroom matter, it's a family matter now, and it does affect us where we should say to him, forgive us our debts. Uh, when we've wronged you, when we've misbehaved, when we've had bad thoughts, these affect our fellowship with God. Our sins have been washed away in the sense that we're not going to be condemned but as believers in Jesus Christ, God still takes sin very seriously. And when we disobey him, it hinders our fellowship with him. So that's the first thing about forgive us our debts. But in addition to that, we're supposed to grow spiritually as Christians. We're supposed to become more and more like Jesus Christ. That means that we're supposed to be regularly dealing with the sinful tendencies of our lives. But have you noticed you can't deal with something that you don't pay any attention to. You can't gain victory over sinful tendencies that you don't admit are there. And so that's why God's word tells us to keep on confessing our sins and he will keep on forgiving. That's how we grow as Christians. So I would ask you to examine yourself today. If you can't think of a sin that you've confessed for a while, there are only two possibilities. Possibility number one is that you have reached sinless perfection, the first Christian to ever do so. Possibility number two is you're not paying attention and there are sins in your life that you're not confessing to him. And since you're not confessing them, you're not doing anything about them and you're not growing. Because part of spiritual growth is you learn to gain victory over your sinful tendencies. So, for a believer, we're not condemned for sinful behavior because now it's a family matter, but it affects our fellowship with God. It affects our ability to grow spiritually. And you know, third of all, the Bible says you can grieve the Holy Spirit. It breaks God's heart when we misbehave. And so on a regular basis, a believer ought to be walking in the light so that God will turn the light on and show us things in our lives that are not pleasing to him. We confess them. We pray for his grace to overcome them. And we grow. We get more intimate. And we don't grieve God. God bless you. I'm done.